Shane Meadows is a director who gets given a lot of labels. He's Ken Loach with jokes, he's a new Mike Lee, he's a champion of raw acting talent. His films like Dead Man's Shoes and Room for Romeo Brass take you right inside working class communities in the UK Midlands. It's fair to say that he's one of the most unique voices working in modern British cinema. His feature, This Is England, and the TV series that followed it, told the story of a group of friends growing up in Thatcherite Britain. And now with the release of what might be the final season, we sat down with Shane Meadows to talk to him about This Is England 90. Thank you so much for being here, Shane. No problem, just fresh in from Mallorca, just landed. And finally, this is England 90. Yeah, four years, that's really mad. The fact that no one's given up on us is, is amazing. Social media is huge now compared to when we first started. So I'm sort of, uh, I realise that people are looking forward to it and they haven't given up. Erect yourselves. From its feature film roots, this is England has now reached its third TV series, set at the dawn of the 90s. Ding, ding. It's more scary than when I made my first series. Weirdly, it's gone the other way, because I think when we did the first one, no one had really made a spin-off that had ever worked. No one was doing it. You know, what you're doing telly for, you know, it's going to ruin your career. You know, you can't go... People go from TV to film. People don't go from film to telly. And I, but I think now, on the third series, everyone's kind of, you know, somehow because 1990 was kind of a big pivotal moment culturally, um, yeah, I'm feeling the heat a bit, but um, I, you know, I've made it as honestly and, and with all the same endeavour that I've made every, all the others, and we've given, you know, we've given it everything we've got, and couldn't have tried any harder. So, if it's not good enough, it's not for not trying. Shane's methods are, are like are, are probably been said by every other cast member, but it's nothing short of genius. And the thing with Shane is, if you're on set with him, he puts trust in you. He, you know, he, he lets you do what do what you need to do, and he'll give you as much time as you need. He gives you so much freedom with um, each individual storyline and each individual day. Jack and Shane write some top-notch stuff and uh, we just come in and kind of work around it and, and kind of just make stuff up as we go along. It's improvised and a lot of the characters are sort of ourselves in certain ways, but everyone's got to be talented to be able to pull off what we pull off. 90, I think, is quite an important one for you because, well, I know you're a super big fan of The Stone Roses. Yeah and the music features quite heavily in this. Yeah. Um, is it more personal in that sense for you? Yeah, so it's all done from uh, the reality of what I grew up with. It was 90s, the first chance since the film where the culture was so big and so strong, it plays quite a proud role in it. You know, hopefully it'll be a chance for people to look at the, nine, you know, get back into 1990, see that summer of love kicking off, but in a way that um, can only happen from someone from Utoxy to, I think. <laughs> so I actually got to watch the first episode today, yeah. um, and I noticed sort of drug use is coming into it a little bit more. What I saw happen across 1990 was that people were, there was this massive feeling that the UK shrunk into like, almost like one town or one county where, you know, 1989, I, you know, I started to go out to, the odd disco in Stoke, or you might travel up to Blackpool, and everyone was fighting, and you know, you always felt like there's gonna be a scrap in here. It was always this aggression and this sense of violence wherever I went. And then it seemed like in 1990, when ecstasy came, there was a period, it didn't last forever, but there was a period where the opposite happened, and you made friends with people when you went to places, and it didn't matter what your accent was, and there was this sort of sense of community that happened. It didn't last forever, the wheels did start to come off and obviously some of the stronger and, and much more damaging drugs in terms of addiction uh, came in like heroin and I can remember ketamine and, and that's why This Is England's kind of set over the course of a year this time. The drug use looks, um, you know, like fairly decent, fairly enjoyable in the first episode. It isn't like that through the whole course of the series, you know. You know, I did some drugs when I was a kid. And, and I've got a really susceptible mind. I'm, like, I'm, a, I'm a real lightweight, you know, in terms of like, I, I was, I'd have like the tiniest amount of something and it would send me crazy. It's like, so I think I was already so far on the edge of an excitable mind that I used to just like literally fall off a cliff. So what am I gonna do about Kelly? She's just struggling a bit at the minute. Struggling with what? I don't know what's that, wasn't it? Mm, crazy. Don't worry, guys. The good times will come again. You were also really lucky, I think, with, uh, with the 80s in that there were these incredible subcultures. If, when you look at 2015, if you were going to set This Is England now, what subcultures are there? Do you think they're sort of dying away? 
Yeah, I do. I've, I was thinking about that. I was thinking it was almost like every two years in England, you know, starting from the 50s, you know, when in America, Bill Haley and Elvis Presley and then the Beatles. And then you kind of get the, the Black Sabbath and the Led Zeppelin and all them sort of things. Then you get uh, glam rock, then you get punk, then you get uh, new romantics, you know, and you kind of work in skin edge and then uh, score. It was like every two years, and then gothic, you know, and that's maybe why it has to finish at 90. Maybe kids don't need that anymore. Maybe they don't need something to attach themselves to, to believe in that the parents go, what is that shit, you know? And you go, it's the best thing I've ever heard. And they're going, it's just noise. I think, I don't know whether them days are over maybe, um, because I don't think, there's been anything that's truly broken the mold or come out that's felt new for a long time. Maybe hip hop was the last thing, um, you know, in terms of England. I think um, that sort of Manchester scene seemed to be like one of the last, uh, the, maybe the final hurrah. To think that this could be the last one is, is a horrible feeling, um, honestly, because, you know, we all get on so much. We all absolutely love each other. It's such a cliche, actory thing to say that we are a family, but we, we are, you know what I mean? Like we. You know, we, we go out together and we meet up as much as we can. I'm hoping, personally, and same, same with everyone, all the, all the cast, they're all hoping that this isn't the last one. You've said it might be the final one. Well, I think, uh, you know, it, it's a lovely end because, you know, Margaret Thatcher left office in, in 1990 and she's played a kind of role all the way through. You know, she's kind of, you know, she took the country to the Falklands and, the, you know, in the original film and Sean lost his dad. And so beyond this, because I do improvise, some stories unfolded across making this that aren't quite the full stops. But at the moment, uh, I'm planning to do a film next and possibly another TV project. Maybe, you know, 10 years from now, I'll have done another three. But as it stands at the moment, it kind of is the end. Well, for me, I, I first watched This Is England when I was a teenager. So I really feel like I've grown up with Sean and with, with the, that cast of characters. Yeah, yeah. Is it going to leave a big hole in your life? It's quite an amazing experience making a film. You know, it's a bit like having a summer holiday when you're a kid where, you know, ultimately you've got six weeks of just being with a group of people. You're doing the thing that you love. And then at the end of it, you kind of go back because we don't all live in the same town and um, the dishwasher needs loading. You need to go shopping. Yeah, there is going to be a bit of a sadness, but I'd rather leave a, a brilliant legacy where people go, it was really good for the first three series, but then it went really crap. Um, I, I'd much rather finish and leave people wanting a bit more than ruin it. Do you ever just think, I've had a fantastic time of all this, but you know what, fuck it, I'm going to Hollywood, I'm gonna do the next Spider-Man reboot? The bottom line is, is that I'd, I'm much happier being able to pay my bills, um, which I can do now, I can pay my bills, you know, I've not got that red letter stress I had for the, you know, the bulk of my life. Um, and I'm making things that I truly believe in and I truly love, but you know, I think I've learnt that I would, I've got nothing to offer Hollywood and I don't think Hollywood's got anything to offer me massively. But I did this thing with, um, with Walt Disney where they asked me if I'd got any ideas and I pretended, so I could get a free breakfast, I took the meeting and, um, and I said I'd got this amazing idea but I couldn't tell them because I was so scared they were going to steal it. And I was lying <laughs> and they started ringing my agent. Two years they kept ringing and then I saw a poster in the UK for the new Volkswagen Beetle so I said to my agent, look just tell him that the idea I'd had was to bring Herbie back. And I said, you know, but it's a modern one. And basically, if I was going to do it, it'd be like Herbie goes ram raiding in Manchester and then ends up doing this really cool stuff afterwards. But it's like Shane Meadows' twist on it and uh, thinking they're just obviously like... And they loved it and they wanted me to do it. And I had to turn around and just tell them I didn't want to do it. So they made it with Lindsay Lohan instead and they did a really, really, really silly version. Um, but that, I think that came out of my lie. I would totally have watched that. Yeah. That sounds amazing. Yeah, so Herbie's a real little shit in it. <laughs> And they said, would you mind not having any swearing in it? And I was like, I'm not doing it. It's, it's not a joke. Work. Yeah. Work. Thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure, Shane. Thank you for having me.